Hello students, welcome to the lecture series of Fluid Mechanics, myself Dhruv Patel. In this lecture, we will learn about our new chapter that is Centrifugal Form. So first of all, topics to be covered during this chapter. So first topic will be construction and working of the centrifugal form. So we will learn construction and working of centrifugal form. Then work done by the centrifugal form. As you already know about it, centrifugal form is always inversely to the hydraulic turbines, right? Then we will learn various types of head and various efficiencies related to the centrifugal form as well as velocity triangle of the centrifugal form. Then our fourth topic will be priming process and our last topic will be net positive suction head that will be NPS. So let us start our this chapter first of all basics of the centrifugal pump. So as shown in this sketch centrifugal pump. So basic work of the centrifugal pump is to transfer water from the lower level to the higher level with the use of any mechanical energy or we can say electrical energy. So in the centrifugal pump water is transmitted from the lower level this is lower level to the this delivery level higher level clear so this is our lower level z1 and this is higher level z2 so we will transfer water from z1 to z2 that is known as our pump right so basically construction and working of the centrifugal pump so first of all let us see definition of the centrifugal pump so hydraulic machines which convert the mechanical energy into hydraulic energy that is known as pump and if this conversion is done by the centrifugal action of the water that is known as centrifugal pump. So this is known as basic definition of the centrifugal pump. Now let us understand basic construction and working of the centrifugal pump in detail. So first of all as shown in this sketch main components of the centrifugal pump are as below. First component will be impeller. So in this sketch this rotating component see there here this rotating component which is mounted on this shaft that is known as impeller right so basically rotating component which mounted on the shaft that is known as impeller in the impeller various blades are there that is backward blade forward blade radial blades right and the center level of the impeller that is known as eye of the pump suppose this is center of the shaft then the center of the shaft is known as eye of the pump or we can say center of the shaft clear students so first one is impeller the basic purpose of the impeller is to provide rotary or centrifugal motion to the fluid or we can say to the water right second component will be casing so as in the Kaplan and Francis turbine here also the spiral type casing are there at the center area will be minimum and at the outer side area will be maximum clear students so this is spiral type casing for the centrifugal pump similar to the Kaplan and Francis turbine next one is suction pipe so this is a lower level we have already known about it this is lower level of the pump so this is known as suction pipe which will transfer water to the lower level to the center level of the pump right this is known as suction pipe next one is strainer so at the end of the suction pipe or we can say beginning of the suction one foot valve or non returning valve that is known as strainer that is attached Strainer is basically one kind of filter which will prevent impurities from the water to the pump, right? Next one is delivery pipe. So function of the delivery pipe is to transfer water from the center of the pump to the our final destination that is known as above height, right? That means delivery pipe will transfer water from the center of the pump to the above height of the destination right so basically these are the five components or five main components of the centrifugal pump first one will be impeller which is mounted on the shaft and which is rotating about the axis of the shaft center of the shaft that is known as eye of the pump right as mentioned here then casing this is spiral type casing similar to the Kaplan and Francis turbine then suction pipe delivery pipe and strainer to prevent impurities from the water right so this is one GIF from the centrifugal pump and let us see one basic video of the working of the centrifugal pump. So let us understand basic video of the centrifugal pump. So as shown in this video, one shaft is connected with the use of this motor 
when the motor is rotated then shaft is rotated with the use of shaft this impeller is rotated and with the rotation of this impeller water will enter in the axial direction and water will move outward in the radial direction so that is basic working of the centrifugal pump then water is enter in the axial direction and water will move outward in the radial direction that is basic working of the centrifugal pump clear students now let us understand next slide work done by the centrifugal pump or we can say velocity triangles of the centrifugal pump as similar to the hydraulic turbine velocity triangle method is same for the centrifugal pump also so this is the velocity triangle of the centrifugal pump as shown in this sketch center level is here this is the suppose i of the centrifugal pump so this is basic radius of the inlet r1 and this is basic radius of the outlet r2 right from the center let us draw velocity triangle for the centrifugal pump so in the inlet velocity triangle first of all let us draw v1 velocity here so water will enter axially so we have to draw this component as a first so this is our v1 component so let us draw v1 component here now velocity of the blade is in this left hand side direction anti clockwise so this is u velocity so let us transfer this velocity into inlet velocity triangle so we will draw this is as a u1 so we have two velocities right now first of all v1 and second one is u1 then v1 and u1 is already there so this is also known as relative velocity of the pump so this is known as vr1 clear students so this is three velocities now we have to divide v1 into two segments vertical component that is known as vf1 and horizontal component that is known as vw1 but v1 is itself a vertical component so that is known as vf1 and horizontal component so v1 is vertical so we can say vw1 is zero because v1 is vertical component so here we can write v1 is equal to vf1 because v1 is itself a horizontal vertical component and vw1 is equal to zero because v1 is vertical right so that is it from the inlet velocity triangle now we have to draw angle alpha 1 and beta 1 so alpha 1 is basically angle between blade velocity u1 and velocity of the jet v1 so v1 and u1 so between angle is alpha 1 and beta 1 is basically angle between blade velocity u1 and relative velocity vr1 so u1 and vr1 so that is known as beta 1 clear students so alpha 1 and beta 1 will be there in from this triangle we can know this alpha 1 is equal to always 90 degree because the entry of the water is at axial direction so in the outlet velocity triangle so first of all water will enter from the v r1 velocity so in the outlet velocity triangle water will exit from the v r2 velocity so first of all we have to draw v r2 now here blade velocity in the anti clockwise direction so we have to draw this velocity as u2 now vr2 and u2 so resultant will be our v2 velocity initial point to the final point so in this triangle three velocities will be there first of all vr2 then u2 in the left hand side direction and v2 in the resultant velocity now two components of the v2 so vertical component that is known as vf2 and horizontal component that will be vw2 clear students now for the outlet velocity angles angle between blade velocity and jet velocity v blade velocity u and jet velocity v that is known as alpha so that is known as alpha 2 and angle between relative velocity and blade velocity that is known as beta so that will be known as beta 2 clear students so the alpha 2 and beta 2 will be there so this is the basically velocity triangle for the centrifugal pump remember students the method for the drawing of velocity triangle is very very similar to the hydraulic turbines so let us revise again the velocity triangle so first of all in the inlet velocity triangle segment water is enter in the axial direction so we have to draw v1 in the 90 degree direction so let us draw v1 first of all in the 90 degree direction upward side then let us transfer blade velocity which is anti clockwise left hand side direction here so u will be here so u1 will be here so this is u1 
then v1 and u1 so this will be vr1 so in this triangle angle between blade velocity u and z velocity v that will be alpha 1 and angle between relative velocity vr1 and z blade velocity u1 that will be beta 1 so from this triangle we can know about it that alpha 1 is always 90 degree because water enters axially direction right let us draw two components of the v1 now v1 itself a vertical component so we can write v1 is equal to vw1 so here v1 is equal to sorry we can write v1 is equal to vf1 and vw1 is horizontal component that is zero because v1 is vertical clear now in the outlet velocity triangle water enters here in the vr1 velocity so in the outlet we have to draw vr2 at first then from the vr2 we can draw u2 so vr2 and u2 will be there from the vr2 and u2 resultant velocity will be v2 that will be initial point to the final point that will be v2 clear students so three velocities will be there then two components of the velocity vertical component vf2 in the upper side and vw2 in the left hand side clear student so that is basically a velocity triangle for the centrifugal pump now let us understand basic design consideration for centrifugal pump so first of all here r1 and r2 is the radius of the impeller at inlet and outlet side respectively that means here from the center of the eye this is suppose i so from the center of the eye inlet radius is r1 and outlet radius is r2 so d1 and d2 that will be diameter of the inlet and outlet side of the respective then n is equal to rpm of the impeller u1 and u2 that means tangential velocity of the blade or impeller at inlet and outlet from the equation we have already derived this that u is equal to pi dn by 60 for the inlet side and for the outlet side respectively u is equal to pi dn by 60 but here r2 greater than r1 from this sketch here r2 is very much greater than r1 so we can write d2 is very much greater than d1 so from these two equation here d2 is greater than d1 so we can write outlet velocity u2 is very much greater than u1 from the velocity triangle you can get proof of this value that u2 is this value and u1 is this amount of value so we can write u2 is very much greater than u1 right so basically from the u2 greater than u1 we can also get the proof from the velocity triangle right now discharge so basically a q is equal to area into velocity right here discharge q area here spiral type casing will be there that is toroidal shape casing will be there so similar to francis turbine area will be pi d that is circumference and b that is width of the turbine casing that will be area will be pi d1 b1 into vf1 that is flow velocity so discharge will be pi d1 b1 into vf1 that will be area into flow velocity now let us understand what will be alpha 1 and vw1 so from the velocity triangle we already know about it alpha 1 is always 90 degree because entry of the water is in the axial direction and vw1 is equal to 0 because v1 itself a vertical component clear students so horizontal component vw1 that will be 0 always in the case of centrifugal pump right then work done by the water on impeller per unit weight so in the turbine you have to find out work done by the impeller on water right but in the pump you have to find out work done by the pump on impeller because we have to rotate the impeller for finding out centrifugal action right so first of all work done by the water on impeller is equal to minus that means exactly reverse value of the work done by water in the turbine right you got my point that will be minus of this is mass flow rate rho a v1 we can find this value from the turbine equation vw1 u1 minus vw2 u2 divided by unit weight that will be rho q g that is your unit weight right so this is equation of series of radial blades mounted on the wheel that equation will be directly imported from the turbine casing right so from the solving this equation here rho is cancelled out and area into velocity that will be discharged 
सो वी कैन नो अबाउट इट माइनस ऑफ वी डब्ल्यू वन यू वन माइनस वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू डिवाइड बाय जी क्लियर स्टूडेंट्स सो इफ वी टेक वी डब्ल्यू वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज फॉर द साइंटिफिकल फॉर्म फॉर इच एंड एवरी एग्जाम्पल वी डब्ल्यू वन विल बी जीरो सो लेट एस टेक वी डब्ल्यू वन विल बी जीरो सो फ्रॉम द अबो इक्वेशन वर्क डन बाय वॉटर ऑन इम्पेलर दैट विल बी वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू डिवाइड बाय जी दैट इज पॉजिटिव वैल्यू राइट वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू डिवाइड बाय जी दैट इज नोन एज वर्क डन बाय वॉटर ऑन इम्पेलर फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट वेरियस हाइट ऑफ सेंट्रीब्यूगल फॉर्म सो दैट इज इट फ्रॉम द टूडेज पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग माई लेक्चर